Hello my dear girls, we are going to learn about plant taxonomy and embryology unit 1. We have already learned that about taxonomical introductions and also herbarium which are called taxonomic resources. So from now we are going to learn about botanical gardens. This is also a taxonomic resource. Okay. We are learning now the continuation of the taxonomy concepts regarding herbarium. So how it is to be prepared? First collection of plant specimens. The plant specimens should be collected from the different localities and habitats in every stage of their growth and reproduction. So the plant specimen should bear flowers and fruits. The plants collected should be either pressed in the spot or may be collected in the vasculum and pressed later in the rust camp or laboratory. So when the plant specimens are to be collected, they have, they must bear flowers and fruits because those are the reproductive parts and are useful. So if the plants are unable to press in the field itself, they are to be carried and then they are to be pressed in the rust camp or laboratory. So next we are going to press the specimen. To preserve their form and color, plants collected in the field and spread flat on sheets of newsprint and dried. The specimens are carefully displayed on the pressing sheet avoiding folding or overlapping of the plant parts. So during the pressing of the plant specimens, careful Carefulness should be taken during the pressure of the plant specimens. Why we should take care of those plant specimens? Because they are to be folded and to be pressed properly. If not folded properly, they are having overlaps regarding the plant specimens. After a long duration, those overlaps are to be teared very easily. So, proper care should be taken regarding the plant specimens when they are pressing in the newspapers. Okay. The largest specimens may be bent into V, N or W shape. The pressing sheets along with the specimens are placed one above the other horizontally and then tightly bound in a plant press. So, why we have to bend some plant specimens are very large. It is can't pressed, it can't be pressed in the herbarium sheet properly. So then we have to bend those stems or some shrubs into V shape like uh, some poesy family and those are having the spike leaflets. So the inflorescence having the spikelets. So they are bent into V shape or N shape or W shape and so on. Okay. Next one. We are going to know about the drying and poisoning. For drying, the press containing the specimens is placed in the sun. So after the pressing in the newspapers, they are to be placed in the sun for the process called drying. The press is opened after 24 hours and the specimens are rearranged, placed between the fresh blotters and then tightly bound in the press. So when we are placed in the sun, don't leave over there. Only they are collected after 24 hours and placed between the fresh blotters. The specimens are changed to dry blotters daily or after 2 to 3 days depending on the weather condition. If the weather having very cool climate, it should be changed for a half day. The process of drying may be hastened with the aid of artificial heat by suspending the press over moderate heat. So this is also a very useful process during the drying and poisoning. Mounting and stitching. So the plant specimens which are preserved that is collected, dried and then poisoned. These are to be mounted and stitching. After dry drying the plant specimens are mounted on a herbarium sheet of standard size that is 29 into 42 centimeters. So this is the standard size of a herbarium sheet. The dried specimens are glued on the herbarium sheets and the stem or branches and then petioles or leaves which, which are having, they are to be stitched. Okay. 
using some glue. Next, which includes la labeling. After mounting the specimen, a label is glued on the lower right corner of the sheet. So, the label contains what are the contents? The flora of some vegetation where it is located. Botanical name of the plant, local name of the plant and the family, locality, habitat, collector's name, date of collection, local use and so on. So, these are the contents very useful for the filling and storing. The mounted and properly identified specimens are stored systematically in special wooden or steel cabinets with pigeon holes. The herbarium specimens require proper care for long term storage. They must be protected against damages by fungi and insects by periodical fumigation with the chemicals like DDT, mothballs and naphthalene flakes etc. So, these are mounted and stitched to the herbarium sheets of a proper size. Okay. And then they are to be stored properly because proper storage is needed to protect them against the damages which are damaged by fungi, insects and so on. So, in order to protect them, we are fumigated with some periodicals like a DDT or mothballs or naphthalene flakes etc. And then botanical gardens. So, botanical gardens are the primary institutions which maintain plants of different varieties. So, botanical gardens include greenhouses, herbarium, research wings, specimens of several plant types etc. They are valuable not only to botanists, horticulturists but also to tourists or visitors. So, botanical gardens are the institutions where there are having different plant varieties. So, these plant varieties also protected which include greenhouses. It is very very useful. The greenhouses are very important to protect the plants which are uh, protected from the different weather conditions. So, these botanical gardens are also valuable for various horticultural or botanists. And next one, Major Botanical Gardens of India. So, major botanical gardens include first one, National Botanical Garden, Lucknow. So, Lucknow having the National Botanical Garden, also new name is called a National Botanical Research Institute. So, it is established in 1946. Popular attraction of this garden is its rosarium. So, we have to know that rosarium is a good attraction in that National Botanical Garden. Also established in the 1946. So, next we are going to know about the Botanical Garden of Forest Research Institute, Dehradun. So, we are calling it FRI, Forest Research Institute. FRI is located in Dehradun. We already know that. So, it is established in 1934 by C.A. Parkinson. So, he established in 1934. This garden includes a greenhouse and cactus house. We already know that greenhouse or greenhouses are there in botanical gardens in order to protect from the weather conditions. So, also there is a cactus house and a plant nursery. It contains a biggest herbarium which includes plant specimens collected from all over the world. Major Botanical Gardens of India. Lloyd Botanical Garden, Darjeeling. This garden has a vast collection of plants from Myanmar, China and Japan. This garden is famous for the distribution of seeds, bulbs and plants of temperate Himalayas to the different countries of the world. A big herbarium or rosary are its major attractions. So, the Lloyd Botanical Garden which is located in Darjeeling having various plant collection that are collected from Myanmar, China and Japan as well as those having the distribution of seeds, bulbs and plants that are present in temperate Himalayas and also various parts of the world. Also, the Lloyd Botanical Garden having a rosary. It is also a big herbarium having a rosary which is a main attraction. And then Lalbagh Botanical Gardens which is present in Bangalore. So, Lalbagh, the name itself indicating it is having a account of roses and then red colored flowers. 
So the garden is now a big center of horticultural activities with well equipped labs for seed testing and soil testing and etc. Okay. So it is also very big center for various activities regarding horticulture. Next, the role of botanical gardens. The largest botanical garden in India is Royal Botanical Garden, Kolkata. So, the largest botanical garden of the world is also Royal Botanical Garden, Q, England. So, both are Royal Botanical Gardens, but it is located in Calcutta of India. And uh, largest botanical garden of the world include Q, England. The botanical gardens provide or furnish many useful things like supplying seeds, providing information of local flora, providing training to research institute, providing instructions for home gardening, etc. Providing relaxation to humans of all ages. So we all know that we are going early morning for walking only for the relaxation of our mind and body. So it is the major part in all of our lives. So it provides relaxation to all ages of humans. And then it also provides the information of local flora. So we already known that botanical gardens and herbarium provide a local flora or vegetation. Also provide training to research students. So we are having a, some a research work. And these botanical gardens are very useful in that time. Okay. Also provide instructions for home gardening. So we are all familiar with the home gardening. And also we want to know some content regarding the home gardening. Botanical nomenclature. So botanical nomenclature is a branch of botany that deals with the determination and application of a correct name to a plant or taxon. So we already know that classification is important and also before that we have to name a plant that is called a nomenclature. So in this botany we are know, knowing that botanical nomenclature is a branch which deals with the correct name or scientific name or botanical name which is having for each and every plant. So okay. Before Linnaeus, the names of plants were descriptive composed of several words. So, Linnaeus gave us the binomial nomenclature system which is having two words. That before Linnaeus, there is having polynomial system. So, the plant having a various names. It includes various names and it is named as a polynomials. Carolus Linnaeus established binomial system of nomenclature in his species Plantarum in 1753. So we already know two books, Theria Elementary Delay Botanic and also Elements. Now we are familiar with the another book of Linnaeus that is a species Plantarum. In binomial system of naming, the name of a plant consists of two Latin or Latinized words the genus and the species. So, binomial system having two words and those to be Latin or Latinized words. The first word indicates the genus and the second word indicates the species. For example, the botanical name of mango plant is Mangifera indica. So, Mangifera is a genus, indica is a species. International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, it also called as ICBN. So, it is very very important topic regarding. The foundations of International Code of Botanical Nomenclature are found in Linnaeus Philosophica Botanicae. So, already we have known three books and this is the fourth book Philosophica Botanicae in 1751 wherein he proposed certain principles of nomenclature. So, Linnaeus wrote another book called Philosophica Botanica. It is very important. Principles of ICBN. So, International Code of Botanical Nomenclature having some principles and rules and recommendations. So, what are the principles including? Botanical nomenclature is independent of geological nomenclature. The application of names of taxonomic groups is determined by means of nomenclatural types. So, botanical nomenclature is different from the geological nomenclature. Both are different in nature. Okay. So, botany 
different and the geological nomenclature is also different so it is said to be independent of both of them okay the application of names it is determined by means of a nomenclatural types and then nomenclature of a taxonomic group is based on the priority of publication so uh, say we have a book and publish the name properly and so priority of publication is very important so the taxonomic group is based on the priority of the publication each taxonomic group with a particular circumscription position and rank can bear only one correct name the earliest that is in accordance of the rules uh, say a plant has a name but it is having earliest name so there are two names for a same plant so in according in accordance to rules which name is apt to the plant that is to be particular and proper as to be correct name next we have to say scientific names of taxonomic groups are treated as latin regardless of derivation the scientific names of taxonomic groups so these scientific names are only treated as latin also we learned about a binomial nomenclature they should to be they are to be latin or latinized we already known that the rules of nomenclature are retroactive unless expressly limited okay next one the rules and recommendations of icbn first one include taxa and their ranks the term taxon was introduced in stockholm code 1952 taxon refers to a taxonomic group group of any rank species is the basic taxon so species is the basic taxon basic unit the other tags of higher rank or genus family order class division and then kingdom so each and every rank is called a taxon so here the basic taxon is a species a taxon may be further subdivided by adding the prefix sub to the term for example there is a two genus but we have to spell genus and then it is divided into sub genus so we have to add a prefix term sub and then order also there is a sub order regarding class that is a sub class we have to add a prefix for the that is called sub to the term rules and recommendations the ending of the name indicates its rank so we have to know about the prefix sub and now we are knowing about the suffixes so what is a suffix the word having a initial term is called prefix and ending name is called a suffix so ending name ending of the name indicates its rank for example kingdom kingdom having the suffix called biota similarly division having the suffix called phyta the subdivision having the suffix called phytina similarly class with the suffix opsida subclass with the suffix opside or ide and order with the suffix ales for example we all know the several orders poales which include poaceae family and having a sub order ine and ac family we know very familiar families that is astraceae which is the largest family in the taxonomy special exception in me is made for the following families so up to now we learn about the suffixes so if the suffix is ac it is called a family but some special exceptions are there for the following families because they are already known with the bentham hooker classification and also earlier scientists earlier botanists and horticulturists and also the research persons are familiar with that so their books are wrote with the these exceptions okay cruciferae for example it is also called brassicaceae this is new term brassicaceae but cruciferae is also considered and then gattiferae clusiaceae leguminaceae is also called a fabaceae so both are considered as a correct pronunciation and also correct words 
ambelliferae it is also converted as apac in nowadays compositae it is converted to asteraceae labiatae it is converted to lamiaceae and palmae it is converted to ericaceae but palmae is also considered a, as a correct name okay because of long usage these terms are also treated as validly published next one name of the genus the name of a genus is a noun and singular which is spelled or written with a capital letter so what is a genus and a species we already know with the only simple terms in depth we are learning about the genus okay so genus is a noun and a singular and spelled or written with a capital letter so how it is uh, named genus how it is named commemoration of a person for example theophrastus so who is said to be father of botany theophrastus name itself having some plants that is genus name so genus name as a theophrasta so that is here we are learning about the several genera which are kept by latinization of the names of famous scientists example theophrasta based on the place some generic names are based on the place of their origin so as a scientist names some of the place names are also located as a generic name for example arcaria so arcaria is named after arco it is a place and then mythological origin some generic names having poetic or mythological origin that is example theobroma so theobroma cocoa is a chocolate plant so theobroma is having generic name which is which is called a god's food and then local names some names are taken from a language other than the latin but they are alternation of the ending so they are latinized example gingo so it is a chinese so though they are not latin they are to be latinized next combination of words some names have resulted by the combination of two or more greek or latin words usually expressive of some diagnostic feature of the plant for example hygrophila marsh loving so up to now we know about the commemoration of a person based on a place mythological origin or local name but sometimes there is a combination of words so marsh loving plants are called hygrophila next we are learning about the species up to now we are learned about the genus the specific epithet is after an adjective illustrating a distinguishing character of the plant it normally begins with a small letter so genus starts with a capital letter species starts with a small letter the species name may be based on a particular character of the plant or a place which is where it is found example indica so indica represents it is present in india or it is first time located in india and then alba which means white sativa which means cultivated grandiflora which means large flowered heta which means hairy angustifolia which is having a narrow leaved so these are some of the species names the specific epithet it is an adjective and also named after some characters the specific epithet may be based after the name of any famous botanist so commemoration of a person we learnt about the genus similarly species name is also based on some scientists example tanbarji it is placed named after tanbarji next authority the rules and recommendations include authority also called author citation in our syllabus the name of species is incomplete if it is not followed by full or abbreviated name of the author for example pyrus malus l so l indicates the linnaeus it is abbreviated form of linnaeus so pyrus malus is recognized by the linnaeus and so it is full form pyrus malus l the so the name is only completed 
only with the scientist name itself okay if two authors have jointly published the name of a taxon the names of both the authors should be cited and linked by the words so for example et or and is used to locate both the scientists example we are taking is antigonan leptopus it was recognized by two scientists hook and orn so both are placed at the end of the scientific name okay until it was placed at the end of the scientific name it is incomplete they are saying that one okay when the name is proposed by one author and not validly published and a second author has it published validly at a later time then the name of the former author followed by the word x is inserted before the name of the second author example kesia montana harry x roth so what is this place say for example one plant is recognized a scientist and further same plant was recognized by other scientist so both the persons were placed at the end of the scientific name both names and also they are linked with a two letters called ex okay next principle of priority each taxon can bear only one correct name say for example cleom gynandra lin so linnaeus recognized this genera cleom gynandra which is first described and named by linnaeus in 1753 then he changed its name as cleom pentaphylla lin in 1824 decandol recognized three separate genera cleom pelanesia and gynandropsis and named the linnaean genus as gynandropsis pentaphylla so later dc iltis in 1960 merged gynandropsis and cleom in one genus that is cleom so according to the principle of priority the oldest name which is named by linnaeus cleom gynandra lin is the correct valid name so this is called the principle of priority okay typification or type method so what is the type method it is a legal device to provide the correct name for the taxon so first one holotype so the author is collecting a specimen for the herbarium and it is said to be holotype which is collected by the author it is very important it is called holotype and what is isotype it is a duplicate of holotype so what is a duplicate when several branches of tree are collected at the same time one is designated as the holotype and the other becomes the isotype and then next one lectotype so it is a specimen or other element selected from the original material to serve as a nomenclatural type when no holotype was designated at that time of publication or as long as it is missing okay when the time of publication is the holotype missing then the original material is served as a lectotype okay and next one syntype it is any one of the two specimens cited by the author when no holotype was designated or more than one specimens are designated as type so syntype is also designated but when no holotype was designated then syntype is also accepted as type okay neotype it is a specimen or illustration selected to serve as nomenclatural type when all the original material is lost so we are having several types that is holotype isotype lectotype and syntype if all the original material is lost then neotype is considered as the nomenclatural type specimen okay next one effective and valid publication so according to the code publication of new names and descriptions are effective only when the printed matter is distributed to the general public or to at least 10 botanical institutions with libraries accessible to botanists generally the date of effective publication is the date on which the printed matter became available so when the name is said to be accurate 
it is very important the name or scientific name or botanical name is said to be accurate it is to be published and also present in at least 10 botanical institutes that is pub published and also having with libraries accessible to all the botanists generally then it is said to be effective and valid publication and then we are we have to learn about the synonyms synonyms are different names for the same plant it is rejected due to wrong application or difference in taxonomic judgment so we are having several names we are uh, learning about the homonym when two or more identical names are given based on different type specimens they are known as homonyms for example Santranthera indica gamble 1924 when shifted to limnophila cannot be named as limnophila indica because there is already a species which is with the same name that is limnophila indica which is named by Druze in 1914 so Santranthera indica is to be not shifted to limnophila indica that is to be homonym next tautonym when the same species name is repeated as a generic name it is called a tautonym example malus malus so both names are same not similar it is same exact word exact repetition of the generic name but kajanas kajan are not tautonyms because the specific epithet is not exactly the same so kajanas kajan us is adding for the genus so it is not a tautonym so we are learned about the taxonomy first unit of our syllabus regarding the identification nomenclature and classification okay so we, we have to identify the plant and also giving naming for that plant according to the binomial nomenclature that is particularly icbn rules and then classified into different orders and then so on binomial system of the linnaeus it is very useful for our nomenclature herbarium it is having collection preparation and preservation for further purposes for various research works okay botanical gardens it is uh, having major botanical gardens of the world and also india we have to know about the botanical survey of india where it is having various branches also and then principles and rules of icbn so it is also called international code of botanical nomenclature uh, so these are the rules we are also already known that principle of priority author citation valid publication and uh, homotype uh, and these all we are regarding the taxonomic topics thank you